Okay, so today I'm gonna be showing you just how to actually spot AI art because I've seen a lot more people online I'm wondering how they tell the difference between AI art and just high quality digital art that's actually been done by a person um, and I just kind of think it's funny isn't the right word but something along those lines um, that people think AI art actually looks convincing because once you actually know what to look for um, it actually gets pretty obvious when something's been done by a computer and when it's been done by a person. So all of the photos that I'm showing you today I got on Pinterest and there's no copyright or anything because they were all AI generated and I'm just going to be talking you through how to actually tell that they're AI generated and I'm going to be showing you the difference um, between AI generated art and what the same picture would look like if it was done by an actual artist, aka me. So, we're going to start with this guy. And on first glance, looks like a pretty standard modelled character, but you can see some pretty big differences and I'm just going to start with the most obvious ones and then work my way over to the smaller details which are a little bit harder to notice and then I'm going to be doing a redraw of it as an actual art piece so that you can see the difference. So first up is the pelvis and the jeans. As you can see here that the pelvis sticks out on top of the jeans but then over here you've got the waistband and the spinal column going into the jeans so if an actual artist had done this they would know that the waistband comes along here and there's only the top bit of the pelvis that you would see while all of this bit would be beneath the waistband and you wouldn't see any of it. So that's one of the big differences. Then as we go up, we can see here that it's got a pretty standard rib cage for the sake of artistic interpretation and everything. Um, but then when you look at the anatomy of it, it doesn't quite line up. Um, but this would actually be a pretty easy mistake for a human artist to make if they're not used to studying anatomy. So that's not a completely foolproof way of doing it. But it's one of the things that you can use to kind of sway it in the way of AI. Especially when you follow it all the way up and you get to here. Because this is the um, joint, or it's supposed to be the joint, between the collarbone and the sternum. And on one side we've got a clear kind of gap between the edge of the collarbone and the star of the sternum, which is actually quite a bit too broad. Um, and then you've got these random bits of rib cage overlapping the sternum, which doesn't happen. And then on this side, it's much more of a smooth join under the sternum. And then again, random bit of bone here, which doesn't belong. and that bit of the sternum is actually in a completely wrong place and the wrong angle. And you can see that the shadows of the sternum make it look like that. And even though there are obviously like bone deformities and stuff which impact the sternum and I know that because I have had one. Um, but the way this is moulded 
it's mimicking the chest muscles rather than the bones. And then here, the shoulder joint is completely wrong. Um, this and this should actually be closer to here for the sake of this pose. And also in general. And then you can see here it's kind of just filled in the cavities with random little bits of bone that look like beads. And that's not what a skeleton looks like, okay? And also like where do these go? Like if you're gonna fill in the cavity with beads, fill it all the way down. You know, don't just fill this bit in because that's not how the skeleton works there. And then as we go up, for some reason this guy has two spines. One at the front and one at the back. So this whole bit is actually supposed to be muscle if you're drawing it anatomically. And that's all muscle and tissue there because it guards and holds in place all your vocal box and your face muscles and it joins up with your neck muscles. And like this is where you have your... Where's the cursor? This is where you have like your... And the, I'm just going to see the artery veins that you can see um, on the side of people's neck and like the tendons and stuff that like flare and go like they get kind of bigger and smaller depending on how tense someone is or how they're feeling and different emotions and stuff. So this should all be muscle if you're just growing a skeleton. None of this is here. Okay, and then onto this bit of the spine, and these bits are at the completely wrong angle, okay? The closest I can think this is supposed to be for the sake of the vertebrae, and these are closer to the type of vertebrae that you get at the bottom of your spine, not the top of your spine, and also this whole section should actually be around the back. Okay, you wouldn't see this part of the vertebrae from the side, especially not with his neck twist, well, tilted like that. This bit here is supposed to be muscle, not bone. This part is actually the only bit you would see from this angle, and it would be going all the way down here. see that he's got a spine here, a random bit that stands up here, which is actually supposed to be part of the sternum, which is here. So again, completely off, you don't randomly have a bit of sternum floating in the lower half of your rib cage in front of your spine. Okay? And then here, the spine goes like that, follows through. And again, he has two spines here, one at the front and one at the back, which is not how spines work, okay? It would just be this front one, okay? But even at that, it would be over a little bit, so it would be more here for the sake of this pose. Okay, and then the next thing that we can see, still looking at the skeleton, is the... Hang on, I'm going to change colour for a minute. Okay, so we can see here that a skeleton is on the inside of the jacket. Right? Because he's wearing the jacket on top. Obviously, because you put your jacket on top of yourself. So if he's a skeleton, then the rib cage is going to be layered underneath the jacket. Just as it would be if he had flesh and muscle and all that. But when you actually look closer, 
you notice these bits. And at first glance, when we first see the photo, we think, OK, it's just decoration on the outside of the jacket to match the skeleton on the inside. And that would be cool if it was actually accurate. But that's not what this is supposed to be. Because here, the line continues and then goes here, then vanishes inside the jacket, reappears here, vanishes again. So, like, is that supposed to be a hole in the jacket? Two holes? Like, that does not work for the sake of designs. Here, we've got the same thing. A sort of shoulder pad slash shoulder bone that doesn't actually work within the design of the jacket. And then here, a random lapel bone, <laughs> um, which isn't a thing. Okay, if an agile artist had done this by hand, or digitally created it, they would have made the design on the jacket a lot clearer and differentiated that from the actual skeleton himself. And another thing about the jacket, we can see here, I think we can see here that he's got a zipper on this side. Okay, that's the teeth for the zipper. But the, what I'm assuming is supposed to be the um, receiving side of the zipper is a way down here. So if you were to pull that over, you're not going to be able to zip that jacket up. Okay, so that's another telltale sign because an agile artist would have known that you have to have the teeth murdered by the, I don't know, the mouth of the zipper so that it actually lines up. And yeah, sure, this bit of the jacket goes down beneath the jeans, but even if the zipper did continue down there, you're only going to get to zip it up as high as here, whereas the teeth go all the way up here. Okay, and more inconsistencies with the design. That's on top, but then the rub cage goes on top of it. Whereas if an artist had done this, they'd still follow that through and try to mimic the design on this side, which doesn't happen here. Okay, and now onto the face and the hair. So this is the bit that actually drives me nuts. Okay, change colour again. Let's go for... Let's go for yellow. Right, so... First up, earrings. These ones hook around his ear. And that's fine, like it could just be clip-ons, it could be... Um, the ones that actually are made to hook around your ear instead of going through your ear, that's fine. But then this bit is at the wrong angle for the sake of being pierced through his skin. Okay, it should be here for the sake of a uh, low piercing over to the side. A uh, traditional low piercing would be here, but you can get three low piercings along this bit. Um, up here is kind of an awkward place and these two aren't completely clear about what kind of piercing they're supposed to be. Um, and then the cartilage of the ear is kind of vague, but some artists do that on purpose anyway. But AI art never knows how to do ears, okay? It just does not get them right at all. And you're going to see that with the other images that I bring up later on, the ears are always a telltale sign. 
Okay, and then here we have got a random bit of bone coming up onto his jaw for some reason. Um, firstly, that's not where, well, that is where the jawline goes, but the actual jawbone, if you were doing this stylistically, follows this shape, roughly. Okay, so from here, you would be seeing his teeth. So even if you were just doing this bit, you would still have to account for where are the teeth coming from and how is this random bit of bone attached to anything? Like is it crawling up from the muscle bones at the front of his neck? If you're doing anatomy this terribly? Is it coming off of his ear? Is it an accessory? And if so, what is the point of it? Okay. Here, the earring is actually okay, but being parallel to this one, it's at the wrong angle and that one is not straight. Okay, so if you're doing it parallel to this earring, which is wrong, it should actually be here. Whereas if you're doing it parallel to a correct piercing, it would be more along this bit. And it would be going that way for the sake of gravity. And finally, we're onto his hair. And AI hair is kind of a pet peeve for me because it doesn't use actual hair. Okay, and I'll show you that again in other photos, well, other images. But you will see a pattern start to emerge that is supposed to look like um, 3D modelled hair, but is actually feathers. Because AI, for some reason, has a habit of using bird feathers in place of human hair. Okay, and you're going to see that a lot with the images that I picked out. Okay, and it doesn't line them up very well, because you've got this bit here, which if an artist had done it, it would follow through to here, and this bit would be further up here, or this bit would be more along here, which is where it would be. And it's kind of awkward to have it sitting on his nose, but I get like the aesthetic of it. But there should be more body to it if it's going to cover up his nose. Well, slant off of his nose and cover up that side of his face. And another thing with AI is that it doesn't know colour theory. Okay, so you can see here his hair is a kind of greenish blue, which is very stylish for him. But here and here, he has got pieces which are the same colour as his skin on his jaw. And that is not how colour theory works for the sake of shadows and highlights and stuff. Okay, this would be more of a purple colour up here. And this if you're keeping up with the green tones, would be more um, of a kind of... It'd be closer to his eye colour, okay? For the sake of a highlight here, going into shadow over here, because it's got the right highlight here. Wrong shadow there. Wrong shadow there. Awkward bit here, where it should be a shadow into highlight, into neutral, into highlight and shadow. And then this bit should be all shadow, with this bit being neutral and then this bit going into highlight. And also what is this bit of hair doing? 
random button here coming off is here, random button here, here. Okay, these sideburns do not look right. Okay, so that is how many signs there are for this one being AI. And these are like the most common things that it gets wrong. Because it doesn't know anatomy, it doesn't know colour theory, and it doesn't actually know physics. Okay? So, I'm going to quickly sketch over this and fix at least some parts of that. Um, I don't have time today to do the whole thing. But I can at least fix some of that up. Okay, so I'm going to take that down to there. And let's go with a dark green outline for them. Make that a bit smaller. Okay, so starting from here. Here, follows along there. The jeans actually aren't half bad, considering. Fly is there. Buttons. Belt loop. and then onto the top bit of his pelvis, which is actually in the wrong position for this pose. Um, it should be slanted a little bit more. Which spine do I want to go with? Okay, let's go with this one. Because it's the slightly nicer looking one. You can see that these vertebrae do not line up. This isn't what vertebrae really look like. Okay, you can see that just by like having a very quick look in an anatomy book. Okay, and this bone does not match there either. So I'm just gonna bring that around. To the chest cavity. Okay, that's this is sternum first. Okay, the sternum is here. That's probably still a bit long, actually. But he's tall, so he can probably get away with it. But again. The anatomy for this one is not very good. We're gonna keep some of the weird ribs, and just because I kind of think they're funny. But this is not what ribs look like. These ones could be going round the back. You can see them going round the back. They won't randomly go up and kind of double in on themselves. And you 
you see the vertebrae along this bit. Starting to tilt slightly because of how his body weight. be down here. Okay? Because the collarbone goes like that. Okay, so we're just going to pretend that works. And the ribcage should actually be moved up as well because we do not have that much space in between our collarbone and the rest of our neck column. Okay, so this should all be up here. And then the vertebrae here. Let's pretend the computer done this right. Because this guy now has way too many vertebrae in his spine. Okay, this guy's impersonating the giraffe. And now let's do the jacket quickly. Where's the ghost? that about the collar and to continue down there you know, round to there and also why is his hair around the second of here? Okay, why is his jacket wearing his hair? into the cuff of the jacket here. And then that disappears very vaguely to imply that the jacket is oversized. Once AI actually got right, usually it messes up pockets. And now up to his face and his hair. And then go 
very close. Again, why do I keep losing the cursor? Very dramatic prowling. I'm not gonna give him the weird jaw accessory thing. This one's supposed to be some form of helix. Okay. And let's fix his hair. Oh, let's even first. Because from this angle you wouldn't actually see the string or the tether to his ear. Unless it's got like a really long um, dangling part on it. Also, this is why I don't usually talk or leave a mic on during streams. Because um, once I'm actually concentrating on stuff, I tend to forget to talk. detail and um, I'll show you the difference. And that is closer to what you would actually have if it was a human artist creating that design. But you can see here where the anatomy mistakes are, okay? Because now that we're not really fooled by the modelled image, and we can see like all oh, this bit, where's the cursor? We can see this bit of the neck looks very wrong. So does this part of the spine, and this angle is off, because it should be down here. And the rib cage, I don't know, change colour for this, just to make it easier. Okay, and, right, so this bit, and this bit of the neck are very wrong. So it's this, and this part, because at this pose, and this angle, the spine 
heads much closer to this. You have shoulders across here. And his rib cage should be over here. And it should be tilted a little bit more. But then his head should actually start here. Look at this is where his jaw should be. Okay, and that is one of the AI images I've got for today. Um, so if you just want me to actually go over these and draw them properly and like detail and fix all of the mistakes, let me know and I'll do that at some point um, and I don't know, post them online somewhere because in general these are good character designs it's just really obvious that they were made by a robot that does not know anything about character design okay so that is wrong one is him from that that. So if he's one a completely fixed version of this AI design, um, let me know and I'll do that at some point this month. Because okay, there's a lot of stuff built up. And I'm just going to start on Be the right download file. Nope. I should have named these. Also, no. Alright, give me a minute. So this is another skeleton guy. All of the ones I'm doing today are skeleton guys, apart from one. Um, there's one who isn't, but that's tattoos and materials, so I'll get onto that when I get there. So this one we're going to start from the top and work our way down. And straight up we can see, again, the bird feathers in place of human hair. This looks like a very unfortunate swan or goose um, that's been placed on as human hair. Okay, it does not really flatter this skeleton cyborg guy or girl or envy. Okay, it just does not flatter them. So again, hair is a big telltale sign. Then here, we've got a very clear skeleton face with a random flesh air, fleshy ear. Okay, that's really inconsistent design and a human artist would know to pick between um, giving him a flesh ear and just leaving it off for the sake of the aesthetic whereas the AI thinks all human designs must have ears. Okay, 
So then, job on. Is actually reasonably correct. Ignore this part because that's just going to annoy me because that is not how that joins into the ear bone. Okay, this bit is actually supposed to go along here and it's there and then the cranium comes out here. Okay, that's how it's supposed to be. Cheekbone, I saw get all relatively correct. A very nice aesthetic character building crack and street on there from getting punched. Then this bit of the skull does not line up because we've got a random bit here, but the teeth are here. Okay, so that is a sign. Teeth go here, which is fine, um, but they should actually be coming up to here. And also those teeth are in the wrong order. Then up to the nasal cavity, that should look very disturbed. And that should actually be a bit lower. And a bit more slanty. Not quite like that. Okay, but this bit should not look like that. Then this sheet one is actually correct. I saw the lines up. And um, right bone is pretty decent there. Um, but this part is not right, okay? It's randomly metallic here, whereas here is much more of an actual bone texture. Here is more like plastic or metal. Eyes, balls are here. Missing that one apparently, which is you know fine for a cyborg skeleton. Random hole here. That along here. Okay then his whole cranium is robot parts. Which looks impressive at first, but then when you get into it, you can see it doesn't actually make much sense. Okay, and this is the next telltale sign of AI art, is that when you look at the details, there's no continuation. Okay, so there's no storytelling. And even just a simple character design should tell a story. You know? Like, are these bits rubber? Are they metal? Are they plastic? Are they supporting him and instead of muscles? Is he wearing it on top of something? Is it his entire body? Is it a bodysuit? Is this what his body is made of? Look at all of those questions would be clear if a human artist had done it because they would have come up with all that as they came up with him because that's all part of his story and you need a story to be able to tell well to be able to design a character to fit that story right so even just a basic character design your image should still be telling a story like, who is this character? What are they? Are they human? Are they a cyborg? Are they a skeleton? Are they a robot skeleton cyborg hybrid crossover? Um, are they someone who used to be human who has now became a skeleton cyborg? And if so, how? Are they happy with it? Do they prefer this version of themselves? What is their body made of? Because right now, all of this looks like car parts. Okay, if that is part of the design, go for it. But make it obvious that it is car parts he has been made out of. 
don't just bundle stuff together and hope that people don't bash them up onto the jacket. Because you can't actually tell or you can't actually see much distinction between his cyber parts and the jacket. Okay, whereas a human artist would have differentiated that better. Okay, they would have shown a difference in the material textures. As we can see here as some kind of bomber jacket or pilot jacket that he's wearing. Well, a very stylized one which is kind of reminiscent of like pirate style jackets and and more heavy duty ones. There's a little bit of a duffel coat thrown in here as well. But it all looks the same texture and like it's made of the same material as his neck and chest parts. Which is not good thing there. Okay, like come on. You can't tell what's him and what's the jacket. And then going down is he wearing a suit under the jacket on top of his cyborg parts? What kind of suit? What kind of jacket? What is he actually dressed for? Like, is this a uniform? Is he an assassin? Is he a butler? You know? Who is he? What is he? What is he wearing? Like, are these supposed to be holsters for weapons? Is it just a steampunk inspired belt? And then randomly this part of the jacket becomes a cloak, which you'd have to make up your mind and stick to it. Then these parts here have absolutely no function. Random piece here, and then over here, what is all this? Okay, like, is it just exterior decoration? In which case, tidy it up. Is it functional? Like, if he was in an emergency, could he pull on something to then give himself, like, a hood? Or does it turn into a coat? Does it extend something? Okay, all of those things have to be clear in the character design. Otherwise it just looks a muddled mess. Then here, some kind of pocket? Or is that supposed to be a brand label? Up here we can see the press stud buttons which are all the receiving ones. So on this side, they should be murdered by the... Um, I don't, don't want to say the top ones, but like, the ones that go into them. But instead, you can see very clearly that is a receiving one as well. And it's only murdering this one. There should be one here, a head of one here, and one here. Okay, and they should all be the top um, studs rather than the receiving ones. Okay, so that's all pretty obvious on him. Like, as impressive as he looks, you can see that again, it was a robot that designed this robot. So just like before, I'm going to quickly sketch over it and fix some parts of it. And I'm just really hoping my music doesn't randomly go into an advert.
Okay, so start with the hair again. Where's the cursor? Right, so this I'm supposed to, I'm assuming it's supposed to become some kind of like windswept style. Because these feathers are like just plastered to his head. Then into the sidebar parts of his cranium, I've decided they're going to be. Neck joint slash brace, just to connect everything up. Okay, and let's say. These are all breathing valves. So let's connect that up to source. And have it come through so you can actually see how he works. This is going to be his vocal area. Again, breathing valve on that side, this same. Even though the actual airways and everything are all in here. So this could be some kind of like transmitter thing instead. Then that let's make these into gears for them. all becomes bodywork. Let's have some wires sticking out. Wire work and wire work. And let's have some like computer boards somewhere. Computer boards can be here. Oh, the electric board things can all be here. Now his jacket. This is all just gonna be a jacket, he's not got a suit on under it. Shoulders, etc., are all here. Sees. And he's stylish, so he's walking around with his jacket open. That's a crease. That's jacket body. Jacket body. Trousers. And let's let him keep the steampunk posters. But let's give him like a really flashy buckle. So 
character. This is messed up. Receiving and inserting. Spell check it there. Bring that down into a full big puffy sleeve here. The jacket is very buoyant. Material increases, increases, increases. Right, let's see. Okay, now it's face. More emphasis on this. Cavity there. Cavity. Oh, not cavity, just a dent. This bit stands out. That bit's going to be a bit there. And that goes round right into the cranium. And I'm not giving that. So you can just bring the valves up and straight into the brain and have some wire work again. Is a lot closer to what it would be if an artist had designed them from scratch. Um, again, just like with the first one, if you guys actually want me to fix these images and like show a before and after of AI generating the image versus an artist drawing that same design. Um, let me know and I'll do that at some point this month. Right, so we've been doing this for just over one hour and I've got some more designs to go over and a few more telltale um, pieces of anatomy which AI never gets right and I actually want to see if you guys can figure out one of the mistakes that the AI made in one of the designs. 
um, because it's actually really funny um, when you actually think of how AI um, works and like where it just copies and pastes these um, sections of the images from some of the time anyway. Um, so I'll be back with that in a minute or so. This guy, looking at him, he isn't a skeleton, he's got kind of cyborg type hands, and he's got a really intricate chest tattoo. But AI does not know how to do any of these things, so let's take a closer look. First up, again, earrings. Those three are fine. But these ones just look like they've been kind of glued on. And then these flecks on his face. Sweet, if you're going to put glitter on your face, make sure it looks like you've done it on purpose and then just smear it. Okay, and here his neck tattoo ends quite sharply, which isn't actually how they end. In real life or in real designs. Okay? In reality, this part would come further up to here. Just to actually finish that design off. Okay, at the very least, it would be here. And this bit would probably come up a little bit to his face, or it would cut off here. Then, if we go down a little bit, see his necklace slash dog leash which again you do you okay comes up here a little bell here kind of choker style then reappears here but up here is more like a chain link these two bits are more like belt buckles chain 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 dog tag and you tell the belt buckle. Okay so 
I'm mixing those parts of the like those elements of the design. So having this necklace being made up of three types of chain links, um, a bit of a bolt up here, a random bead, and then utility belts. Um, it doesn't really flow, whereas a human artist would have known that and they would have just picked one type of chain to have around his neck. And then it's onto the jacket, and again, oops, uh, AI has tried to do a zipper, it's gone up pretty well here. These are all teeth. Um, not teeth, these are all the mouth bits. But the only teeth are here. Where there is nothing for it to latch onto. Okay, because the mouth starts here. Whereas on the other side, there is nothing here. For it to bite into, or for it to get bit by. Instead, it's got lovely little stylish lapels which are not murdered. Okay, so that's another thing. But down here, we can see the front tail, I guess, of a shirt. or a very long time, but it's got the same design as his tattoo. So we follow it up, and follow it up, and think, okay, maybe it's not a tattoo, maybe it's just his shirt. But no, it follows all the way up into his night tattoo. Okay, and again, a human artist would have known that, so they would have either kept them completely shirtless and not randomly gave him a shirt tail or they would have made a, um, a kind of skin tight shirt and gave him a collar here or here. Okay, more likely here if they were keeping the chain around, around his neck. Wow, my allergies are flaring up right now. Okay, and then down here Okay, I'll come back to his hands, because they're pretty interesting. Okay, I'll come back to the hands of the jacket. And here we've got a lovely um, skull embellishment on his trousers, which I guess are supposed to be a leather effect to an extent. Okay, and his pulling material here, which is good random studs here. That all seems fine. But when you look here, what is this supposed to be? Is this a hole? Is it a stud? No one knows. The pocket is up here, so it's not a pocket. It's just a random piece that's been thrown in. Which is another thing because again, AI doesn't have um, continuity. Continuity. It doesn't um, flow with the design. It just picks and chooses and drops stuff where it thinks it is. And then there's a leg here. See, it's thigh here, so it should be going up here. Instead, his thigh is here, which implies it should be here, all the way down. Okay, and both of those placements of where the edge of, edge of his thigh is impacts where he's putting his weight, how he's putting his weight through his leg, and it uh, impacts his posture, and the placement of his arms, and his hands, and his fingers. And again, the human artist would have had all of that planned out, or they would have figured it out along the way. And now, on to the jacket. <laughs> Collar is fine. That butterfly flower thing over there is fine. 
this girl is actually really cute um, and it is actually pretty decently correct with the little butterfly flower things coming out of his ears. That's not that bad. But it's then drowning into this bit. Again, at first we assume this is just a strap that's thrown over his shoulder for style, which some jackets do have. Except it ends here with a random tear here. And then continues here and here into the sleeve. And then goes through here, despite there being nothing here that it's attached to. And again, nothing back here for it to be attached to. jacket and then here you can see the inside of the jacket what looks like a bit of a crinkled inside which works um, but it doesn't mimic the imprint of the design um, and if it was a real artist that had done it then they would know um, how thick this jacket is, and you can see here it's not very thick and it's not actually lined with anything. So, this puffy bit wouldn't be there, okay? You'd be able to see the interior stitching of this, unless they had lined it with a, a different material, and that would have to be distinguished from the exterior material. studs are a bit random but they're not that bad. Again, that one random shape which is mimicked on his trousers. And now onto the hands. Because at first glance they look quite impressive, like cyborg kind of skeleton hands. But then we actually have a look at them. This one, we assume is the first finger, middle finger, ring finger, where's the pinky? So if this one's the pinky, ring finger, middle finger, where's the first finger? Is it up here? No, because this does not fall through here. Okay, so for this pose, you would have to have this as the first finger, middle finger, ring finger, pinky, because the thumb goes up here, or the thumb would be kind of behind it there, both work. And that goes down into the hand there, wrist joint, and then into the arm. Then here we can see thumb looks fine. That flows through there, this joint into the arm there, that's all fine. But then we see first finger, middle finger, ring finger is here. So, what's the problem with that? This is the problem, okay? Your middle finger is longer than your first and your ring finger. Okay, your middle finger is your longest finger. Okay, so middle finger should be here, and it should be here, or this one should be up here for this one to be here. And also, this position would have to have it here for it to be shorter, okay? You would have to bend it, okay? Whereas if you've just got your hand relaxed, 
your middle finger a little bit longer than your first and ring fingers. Because when you actually look at the structure of these, if I okay, I probably can't rotate them right now. But if you rotate that around a little bit, and I'll do it on the looks more natural there but again the length of the finger is completely wrong but what you can see is that if we do this it looks a lot more like a bird foot rather than a hand. Okay, and the same again with this one. Just really quickly sketch over the outline. or the rough corrections I should be saying. Okay, the hair actually has a bad this time. Okay, I'm pretty sure it's like some kind of parrot hair or parrot feathers that have been chosen for its hair this time. And I mean like journal not strictly masculine, you just generic you. Very dramatic shadows again. Lost the pressure. That's the parts in this face here. That's diamonds. Purple. Right, this slightly part eight. Very lovely tattoo on this 
chest. That's so. And then once that's zapped up, they would overlap. So tattoo. No, hold the front tattoo. Yes, it's gone. See if it's mirrored there. And I'm just going to bring this up and over there. Make these a bit more decorative. But this is actually considered a mistake in character design, character design. Um, just because you've got the lines running into each other. Little sideboard joint wrists. Okay, and another thing is this chain here. 
that should be assumed as some kind of bracelet. But where does it go? You know, like as a attached to the other wrist here. And if so, are his hands stuck behind his back at all times? Like, is he cuffed? Or is it running on the inside of his jacket? Is it attached to anything? Is it attached to the chain around his neck? You know, like, is it one of those... Designs that goes inside the sleeves, around the neck, and out the wrists. Designs in the trousers there. Should they be leaning forward or should they have a seat planted on the ground? Because if this guy moves forward a little bit, then he'll have both the seat very firmly planted on the ground and like if you shoved him he wouldn't really budge. Whereas if his thigh is a little bit back then he's leaning forward onto like the ball of his foot and he could topple forward or like he's leaning forward to see something. Okay, so again, that pose impacts the story of the character. Now for everything I just said about his hands, I win that up. this you would know one a human artist has done it and two that they do not know a lot about hand anatomy and because even though that's fixed and um, the finger position is fixed you can now see that the hand position is off and because his wrist should actually be here not here if, if his wrist is here his hand would be slanted here. Whereas work is slanted here, one is rest here. Which then goes into his arm that's more like that. Whereas right now he has this. That's the 
third one. And there's only one left, I think, for today. So again, well, as usual, not again. Um, make sure you're following and then leave a like and a comment and all the other stuff that your main group is supposed to do. Um, and just let me know if you're enjoying this or if you've um, tried to tell the difference between AI art and actual art before. Um, or if you get really confused, or if you have your own tracks for spotting it. And now I'm just going to go on to the last one, I think, for today. Computer, please work. Yep, last one. This one. So let's start with his face and his ears. The okay, ear goes along here. should be a bit of detail here, and there should be a gap here. Okay, you should see more of a, well, not even a gap, just more definition here. Okay, then put the ear in, which blends in with his hair too much. Ear in through the wrong place. Then here, we've got a sideburn cheekbone and shadow from cheekbone all blurred into one. First to make that even clearer, you'd want to slant the side burn there, bring the cheekbone around more, and then have your shadowing underneath it. Nice mole or freckle here which is very distinctive but handsome. But then a random pearl here in the middle of this eyebrow and stuck to this hair. That doesn't work. Very bobby ear in there, which is fine. Go down, neck tattoo is alright. And we can't really tell if these are freckles, moles, or if they're part of the tattoo. Now we're on to jewellery, which is one of the things that AI does not know anything about. Okay, you've got very um, modern, stylish type shapes here, the geometric jewellery, which then vanish, reappear here, and here, all along here. this all attached? Is it one necklace? Is it two? Is it draped over the skeleton armour? Like, is it part of the jacket? Part of the shirt? None of us know, and neither do the robot who designed it. Then we're on to the body. So here we can see that he's in a very classy black shirt. Receiving stud there, no top studs here. Okay, and also with this overlay of the collar, it should actually be receiving one here, closed cap here, and then when you buckle it, when you button it over, and um, it hides it essentially, so it just looks like a nice um, decorative button. 
you wouldn't see the exterior of the receiving stud. Then here we've got a whole lovely mess of this skeleton armor, which I think is supposed to be a rib cage at the top, but then goes into a skull. It's a little bit like an octopus, or more like an elephant skull up here actually. So you've got like rub cage and the elephant skull, or a cute little dragon face, that's cute. Um, and then into a human skull and mouth and jaw, random lines here. And then what looks like a femur um, sticking down from the ribcage. And then suddenly his top half vanishes. He's not got a bottom half. Like he's got no pelvis, no legs, no thighs, no hips. Just skeleton robot legs, I guess it could be. And then up here, we've got a shirt collar, a second shirt collar, on top of the black shirt, on top of the skeleton armor, but then the skeleton armor overlays the colorful shirt. So then we think, okay, maybe the colorful collar bit is actually part of the jacket. That works a bit better because it's on the outside. Except here, where the skeleton armor kind of overlaps it. And then the jacket finishes here. That's a nice little box jacket for them. It's uneven there. which is fine. But again, where is his bottom half? Like, you should not be able to see inside here. I think that should be suit pants if you're following the logic of wearing skeleton, monster skeleton armor on top of your suit shirt. to where the hair isn't terrible. Right, and let's see how it looks when I do the quick sketch over the top just to fix some of that. Okay, the hair is fine. Lovely, stylish, and fashionable hairstyle for them. Body and volume. Okay, he's got a really good hair graph there. Eyebrows with a nice little slice to do it, to so the character a bit more. Here we 
we can see this guy has an actual problem. I get why people think AI art is a good thing. It's like it's quick, it's easy, and it gives you something which looks impressive at first. Um, but the amount of time that you would have to spend correcting this, you may as well have just made it from scratch yourself and avoid having to correct it in the first place. And like, I know people say. AI art is good because it makes art more accessible to people who like don't have the resources um, or the money for like expensive art materials or art school and stuff. But there's so much free stuff easily available that that excuse is kind of lazy because like you can use Blender, which is completely free, and there are endless, endless amounts of tutorials for it on YouTube, which is also free. Um, you've got Krita, which you can get a free version of, and um, the only downside is you have to be, um, you have to pay attention to which version it is, um, and just make sure you keep updating it, um, otherwise it goes really slow once it's an old version. Um, but it takes like five minutes to reinstall the newer version and you can get like emails and stuff about when the new version is out so that you're not missing it. Okay so again that's all completely free. Um, for a blender you need a mouse um, instead of a tablet. get a mouse really cheap. Okay, mine wasn't even that out. Okay, you don't need big fancy brand names. Um, tablets are a bit more expensive, but again, if you don't go for the, brand, the big brand names or anything, you can get them for like less than a hundred pound easily. I'm just giving them some browsers here. Button here. Give them the belt. easily becomes a pocket. I think that's just follow this suit now. I think as lovely as the monster, octopus, humanoid, ribcage, brain, skeleton armor is, doesn't serve much purpose here. Okay, geometric jewellery, join it up. And he's got a lovely 
necklace. I got under the shirt there. mouse it just takes a bit longer than it does learning learning to use a tablet and pen but it's still possible and honestly if you have a smartphone if you have a tablet or an iPad you have got plenty of access to free software which you can learn to draw YouTube tutorials and Twitch tutorials. I feel there is plenty of resources out there for free. You just have to spend a little bit of time looking into them. Um, but I promise you, you will be happy with the work when you start doing it yourself. Okay, and you will actually appreciate it more and you will be more proud of it. And yes, sure, the first few attempts might look like a gargoyle scribble on something, but when you put in the time and the effort to learn to draw in the style that you like, you will be proud of yourself for it. Okay? Because at this point, if someone uploads AI art and claims it as their own, I can quite much guarantee you, the internet will not like you. Okay? Because AI art works by stealing images from online and kind of collaging them together and telling you this is a complete image when it really isn't. Okay? Whereas artists who spend months and years of our lives learning how to draw this, learning how to use the software, learning how to use the different materials, and learning anatomy and physics, and, and like, the different ways that like the like about all of them. Why we cannot talk right now. The different ways that like light impacts surfaces and materials and everything. We have to learn that. And AI art does not um, replicate that in a way where it does those things any honor. Okay? So it's like it just kind of mimics it and makes it all seem like more of a gimmick. Which, again, is an insult to those of us who spend years and years of our lives learning how to do this. Whereas someone who just uses AI programs to make one up in less than an hour and say, this looks the exact same as something a professional done, whereas we can very clearly see that it does not. Okay, because this design is much closer to what a real artist would give you as a very rough sketch of a fashion model with an actual problem compared to this um, AI amalgamation. So if you wanted to learn more about how AI art works and the impact it has and other ways to spot it in different types of character designs and like different types of art, then make sure you're coming back because
because I've got a lot more planned. Okay, I'm going to be talking you through different art styles and how AI mimics or tries to mimic them and how you can spot it in um, a lot of different genres of art and how to tell if an image is a real photograph or an AI image, if something if it's Photoshop or if it's AI and I'm going to be talking you through um, AI landscapes and AI interior design um, and like how to spot that as well rather than just character design um, but there is a lot more character design images to come because I'm going to be looking at like the different um, types that I've seen a lot of people unfortunately fall for on Pinterest and stuff. So again, make sure you're following, leave a like if you're watching this on YouTube, leave a comment and give me some ideas for other kinds of AI images that you are wanted me to talk you through how to kind of spot. Let me know if you want these character designs completely redone um, by me rather than by a computer. And that's just coming on two hours. And that is us for today. Also, let me know if it was better actually hearing me talk versus just having like the ASMR and um, music in the background the entire time. It's like, I'll talk more if you guys want me to talk, you know? I just have a habit of going completely silent when I'm concentrating on stuff. And also it's a like mood, so like, some days talking is not an option. But yeah, that's us for today. And make sure you come back next time so that you can see the next um, AI stuff. I really need to come up with an outro or something. I will. Maybe next time.